Oh, hi. Good morning, folks. Um, we are going to do the news today, but um, you know how I feel about doing the news. And as far as I'm concerned, I already heard the news today. Um, I did three yards today, and I'm, I'm just exhausted. And started early in the morning, but I got a... I got the news already. Would you like to hear the news that I went through this morning? You know, I, I'm going to beg the people who are on the other side, okay? I'm going to beg you. And I'm, I'm not saying this to be melodramatic. I'll take off my glasses so I don't feel so bookwormish. Can you people... Uh, the ones that are the cheerleaders for everything going on and the ones that are completely in lockstep and the ones that are kind of on board and the ones that are, don't really have any trouble with this and all of this. Can you please do one thing? Could you forget about yourselves? I don't know if you're familiar with that term, but it's a term used when... People think that they're real smart and it's all about them. And it's used in the military. And they'll sometimes say, forget about yourself. And it means, think about somebody else for a change or think about the big picture. I want to explain something to you because of what I just went through with one of my customers who probably won't be my customer for much longer because we kind of had it out today. And... I kind of didn't care because um, I cut a yard for $30 and it, it kills me every time I do it. I kind of had enough of it. But I've known about this. I've known her for a long time. This is the woman that I told you about that has a, a, a type 2 personality, which is she knows everything. She was a supervisor in her work. Uh, she knows everything, uh, but it, that's how she is. She lives right next to the city commissioner here or something, okay? Can you folks that are on board to some degree or another, could you forget about your own being for a, a matter? And can you listen to anything that's being said for reason? Or would that be just a mindless anti-jabber? I mean, is it possible that anybody could say anything that wouldn't make you instantaneously say propaganda anti-jabber? Is there anything that could be said that is contrary to your beliefs? In other words, can you forget about yourself? Well, no, because I'm always right. Well, of course, that's the problem. If you think that you're right, and of course, my friend's always right, he's a doctor... I don't care. Can you listen to anything? I talked to that woman calmly at first. It's, it, it was a calm conversation. It, you know, nothing happened. But all there was was a lot of propaganda. Okay? That's my opinion. Um, she said are you jabbed yet? And I said, no. I said, if they do that, they're going to have to hold me down or they're going to have to take away whatever else that, you, you know, you can't uh, blow your nose or you can't go and, and, and uh, get gasoline at the store. That might compel me to go get uh, the jab and it's coming. Now, why? Because you have people that cannot forget themselves. They cannot think they rely on people that have some knowledge that are most of the people are, are for this. So it's very easy to find people who you can feel a great deal of trust in. Doesn't necessarily mean that's right. Why doesn't it? Because, folks, in 1937, you couldn't find one person in a European country that begins with the letter G. You could not find one person who spoke out against the plan. Do you understand? Just because there's a majority doesn't mean that you're right. But again, you would have to forget about yourself and say that it's possible that, wait a minute, you're, even though you're anti-jab, well, let's hear what you have to say because I want to hear what it is that you have to say. And if it makes 
some sort of sense. But you see, we can't think because we've been trained now by our television um, to whatever, to act in a way that whenever we hear anything that does not agree 100% or does not cheerlead, we don't want it. Now, maybe we might be willing to have some uh, some staged opposition. You know, like we might put somebody out there that would be ridiculed, that would take our side, that would take our side, and that you know that in advance, right? Hence, Ron Paul and uh, Squish Face, Florida Governor, right? <sighs> Folks, there's nothing we can do. There's nothing we can do to prove to you that this is not what it is. There's nothing we can do. Do you know what we can do? We can show you the yellow flags and then the red flags and then the uh, bright red flags that are going off all over the place that you need to stop and consider because we've already had this, uh, not exactly, but similar things in the Third Reich. Do you understand? In, in the 30s. We've, we've had this already. It's been done before. And it makes this majority look like it's not a majority at all. They had everybody raising their arm. You understand? And very few didn't. And what was the old saying? Well, it was the people that were put in concentration camps that said, uh, but, you know, help us, and nobody wanted to help them. And pr they said, what will happen is eventually they'll go after the, the gay people, and eventually they'll go after the Romanian people, and eventually they'll go after this and that, and there'll be nobody left to help you when you need it. That's exactly what's happened here in the United States. There's no one left. There's no one left. They're all absorbed. Folks, this right now is not the way your country, the United States, forget about the other countries, they don't matter. And you know, I have a person in Cyprus, I have uh, somebody that called me mate, so they're from somewhere in the Commonwealth. They know what I'm talking about. I'm not trying to be mean to them. The United States is the thing that matters because we're the nerve center. You understand that? You know, we're not Iceland. Not that I have anything against Iceland. But we're the United States. We saved the world in World War II. You might debate that. It's up to you. Folks, the red flags are all over the place. Yet you don't want to look at them because you're busy looking at that television. Now, anyone that looks out here does not see people falling down dying. We don't see that. You know why? Because when you look at the numbers that they give us, you can see what the real numbers are. And I'm not going to go any further into it. Number two, I'm not sure that we're entitled to the numbers of people who have fallen from this. I'm not sure that it's, it's our business legally. I'm not sure. Because there are doctor-patient confidentialities. And they're not at liberty to discuss anything. Although, what they give us better be good enough for you. So shut your pie hole and just accept it because it's what you're going to get. And you're not entitled to anything else. Now, that's a red flag, folks. Do you understand? That's a red flag. Do you know what that's equivalent to? It's equivalent to the infield fly rule, which still doesn't work at times in baseball. In baseball, you have a situation sometime where you have a runner on first base and baseball, like American football, has been perfected to the point of near perfection. But there are some problems that offer confusion and um, inequality by the nature of, of, of the rules. The, the infield fly rule is designed, in case for those of you that don't know, um, in baseball, the batter is forced 
to go to first base. He's compelled and forced to go to first base when he hits the ball, no matter what he does, unless he strikes out. And if he strikes out, he's still not out sometimes. You'll find that out when you lose a game because of it. A batter can strike out if the catcher drops the ball and the bright, and the uh, batter's bright enough to figure it out and hasn't left the batter's box, the batter area, he can run to first base. If he gets there, before the ball gets there, the ball is thrown awry, he's safe and it's not an out. You understand? So it's not always as easy as you think. You have to have some knowledge of baseball to understand this. But the, the batter ha is compelled to go to first base. If he safely reaches first base, he is compelled to go to second base because the rules state upon hitting the ball, if the next batter who's up at the plate hits the ball, that runner on first base, that man on first base, he's compelled to run to second base. Why? Because it's not legal to have two men on the same bag at one time. When I say bag, I mean first base or second base, or third base. You're not allowed to have that. So, what you have to do is, if you're a runner on first base, you need to make sure that you're paying attention because if there's, the rule is this, if the batter strikes out, you're not compelled to move. Unless the ball rolls behind the catcher and you see that you can get to second base, you're entitled to do that. You can try to steal. You can try to steal. You can do whatever you want like that. But if the batter hits the ball, there is two ways. If they pop the ball up or it goes into what they look like a fly ball, the, the runner on first base has a critical decision to make. And I know, folks, that this is boring you, but this ties into the, the hoax, the scam. <clears throat> because these rules and these scam, the scam is using the baseball scam. Okay? Now, I've seen it before. Okay? If the ball is hit into the outfield, they do not automatically count it as an out. It depends where it's hit in the outfield. If it's shallow and if it looks like it's playable, easily playable, meaning that there's a person there that can catch the ball quite easily, they put their fist up like that and they call for the infield fly rule. And they do that for a reason. They do that be because of the problem with the rules and the fairness. It's really difficult to explain. It ties right into the scam. When the ball's hit to the deep outfield, there's no fly rule because it doesn't endanger the runner on first base. The runner on first base on a long fly ball kind of goes on first base, that is. If he's on first base, he kind of watches it. And if he thinks that that outfielder isn't going to catch the ball, he may run. He may go all the way to second base and reach second base and keep running if he thinks that that outfielder can't catch that ball. But the rule states that if that man on a run or whatever that is going for the ball, if he catches that ball, even if he falls down or whatever, he catches that ball. The rule states that if he can get that ball back to first base before that base runner who's left first base thinking that you weren't going to catch the ball, if that ball goes back to the first baseman and he catches it, steps on the bag, or touches that runner before he gets back to the base, that base runner is out. It's a double play, two outs. The out from the catch and then the out from the errant uh, running skills. Okay, or you just took a chance. Sometimes you just take a chance. Okay? Because the guy may not catch the ball. You ask, why would he run? Because the guy may not catch the ball. And if it drops, it's going to take another outfielder a while to get to that ball. And you may make it all the way to the home plate. That's why they do that. That's why they take the risk. That's the chances you take. Now, how does this relate back? Well, there's a thing called the infi infield fly rule. And what it does is this. 
you can see the problem with the base running from first base when you're a base runner. But there's a real complex one, and that means when the ball is hit very, very high in the air, not a little bloop, that's not, not like a little bloop. If the ball is hit in the air and it goes very high, and it looks like there's plenty of people to cover it, okay, the catcher, the pitcher, or the first baseman, or the third baseman, whatever, the first thing you're going to see in baseball is the umpire goes like this, and he puts his fist down, and he says, infield fly rule, okay? That means the batter is out. He's out, okay? Now, what does that mean? It means if you let the ball fall, he's out. You understand? That means the runner on first base has no obligation to leave that base because there's nobody coming. When you see the referee go like that, it means that the base runner is safe on his base. He does not have to leave because the batter is called out. He doesn't have to go to first base. It's out. Now, I have seen it, and it can also be on a line drive. Um, one time I watched Mike Lowell, who was a third baseman for the Marlins, and um, he was savvy to this. And um, the, uh, the batter hit the ball, and he was playing third base, and he caught it. Um, it was kind of a little blip that went right into his glove. It was a little, a little rainbow. And um, Mike Lowell saw that the base runner wasn't going too far from first base because he knew the ball was going to be caught. So he knows he had to go back to first base. So he couldn't leave the bag too much, maybe 10 feet. That's it. And then he had to get back real quick before Mike Lowell would catch the ball and throw it back to first to get that runner, to get that runner that's off the base. What did he do? Mike Lowell pretended that he couldn't handle it and the ball rolled down and fell on the ground, in which he picked up the ball and threw it to second base. The base runner is out because there's no way he could make it to second because he has to protect himself from that obvious, very likely catch. He can't leave the area of first base. He has to get back. Good chance of that. Lowell just dropped the ball on purpose, threw the ball to second base, got that out, and then they threw it to first base for a double play. And the uh, umpire on the third base side went over and giggled and went like this and said, nice try, Mike, but we already are savvy to your fake handling skills of the ball, and you're not getting a double play. The batter's out, runner goes back to first base. Do you understand? This is a scam that Mike Lowell did the same way that you have the scam now. You've got mindless idiots right now that do not understand this. These are mindless idiots that are evil. And they're just foot soldiers of the the, the far left. That that's what you that's what they are. They're they're Yeah, and uh, and the uh, three-wheel NPR here, he get he gets his news from NPR. He gets his news from NPR. This is what he told me. He gets his news from NPR radio. So, uh, there you have it. How are we supposed to check the numbers? It's like the infield fly rule. How do we check the numbers? We have to rely on a profession to get the numbers? How, how do we do it? How do we know how sick people are? How do we know if they need um, canisters of something? How do we know anything? We don't. We just have to sit around and say, oh, my God, everything is terrible. And everybody's uh, whatever. Do you understand what I'm saying, folks? It's only the people like the umpires and even the fans know that the infield fly rule is a finicky thing. It can go awry. It's complicated. You can even get, there's all sorts of problems with it. Okay. But this is the problem we're having right now with the scam. And they're not going to let up, folks. Scam is not going to let up. It's going to continue. Uh, the people like uh, like a Three Wheel Idiot here, uh, Mr. NPR, he's not going to be able to forget about himself. He's too smart to be able to understand and see all these red flags that are occurring. Folks, this is a wish list 
for people who wanted to control society on a global scale. This is a wish list. Restrict you to your house, restrict your movements, restrict your abilities to stay out. This makes regular martial law look easy. You have to start determining whether it's called for. The only way we can do that is to look at the numbers and we don't know what the situation with the numbers is, in fact. So getting back to close this story, my customer said uh, that uh, people are perishing. They're perishing because they don't want to get that, that jab. But that may or may not be true. There may be people in there that are sick anyway. We don't know. They, they, I mean, it's so troubling with this that the red flags are all over the place. So we can't give you solid evidence. We can just show you that this is wish list kind of stuff for the elites that use foot soldiers that are mindless idiots. And they use them as foot soldiers. And I... And that woman there that I cut the yard for, I told her, I said, uh, that uh, Philippine President Duterte is talking about putting the people in jail if they don't. And she was quite at home with that idea. She was at home with it. She thought that was Jim Dandy. That doesn't make you people stop and ponder? Not at all? Folks, this was the nose of the camel that went into the tent. Remember, we'll just wear, we'll just wear facial coverings. And then what happened after that? Restriction upon restriction. And they introduced this to us about this jab as being not mandatory. Although if you wanted it, you can get it. And look at how the camel has gone from the nose in the tent to now we're coming up on the hump. Eight and a half feet up. Huh? Right? Because even though they're not going to force it on you, if you want to go in and buy groceries to go eat, then you're going to have to get it, right? If you want a driver's license, you're going to have to go and show it. And this guy over here, he, he doesn't care. He's got a three-wheel bicycle. He thinks he's going to hide out from all this. Wait till he can't go in. He don't want the jab. I give him credit for that. He don't want it. But he still is a big listener to NPR and he knows that everybody else needs to get it. I told him, why don't you get it as a courtesy? And he just laughs like he's chuckling right now. He says, I'm a freak. Does this make any sense to anybody? Where is the world that we used to have? They don't want it, folks. That's right. My channel was taken away twice and I got a strike on this one. That's right. Because this is the second smartest man in the world right here. That's the second smartest man in the world, followed only by Philippine President Duterte, who is going to try to put people in jail for not getting the jab and then giving them a medicine that is supposedly made for pigs, for anti-something or another, which I don't know. That's what I've heard. That's what's been printed. The last time I did it, I got a strike, so I won't say it. So that may or may not be true. I saw it on a reliable news source like Reuters or UP. So, as well as the China Morning Post and all of that. So, I'm convinced that it's real. You may not be. That's my soapbox for the day. Remember, do exactly what they tell you to do. Shut your pie hole and be happy. And things will get better in a period of uh, decades, okay? So if you have to wear your mask or you have to uh, have these uh, things or everything, just remember China does it, so it's got to be a good thing. And you know how smart Chinese are, okay? There you go. Goodbye.